Sometimes in order to understand malware, it's best to know how to create things. So I'm going to show you how to create a virus in Python. So let's start with um, a directory. I have this directory. And I have three files in it, a hello.py, a virus.py, and a command.exe shortcut. And the hello.py and the virus.py are just hello world programs. You can see very simple. If I run one of them right here, uh, hello.py, it just says hello world. Nothing complex, simple programs. All right, so let's get started. So this first program, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to turn this into a virus. Now, what you need to do is when you have a virus, it's good to first be able to identify where the virus begins, where it ends, and so you can copy the code. So I will have this right here. Just a nice little comment that says the virus begins right here. And at the end of the virus, I'm going to have another one that says the virus ends. All right, so now I've got this. So in between this, I'm going to write my virus. So what's my virus going to do? First, I need some libraries. Um, I'm going to need to read a copy of myself in memory, open up other programs, and then infect them if they're not infected. And then at the end, I'm going to do some payload thing, if there is any payload to do. So my first thing in my virus is to import all the libraries I need. And the libraries might be imported by something else because the program might have it, but I want to make sure. And I like sysglob and my regular expression library. All right, so first step is to copy or get a copy of the virus. Get a copy of the virus. Second, I need to find potential victims. This would be other programs. Find potential victims. And last, I need to, well, not last, I guess, check and infect. Check and infect the potential victims. And then finally, there's the optional payload, assuming you want to actually do something. So what I want to do, at the very last bit, is whenever I infect somebody just to show they're infected, I will print infected. And that's it. Just so I know they're infected. It really doesn't do much, but it tells me they're infected. All right. Let's start with the first part, getting a copy of the virus. How do I get that? Well, I start with this uh, vcode equals list thing right here. I'm creating the vcode as my virus list. I need to open up a copy of myself. So I open... And because this program is running, it should be in my arg v as number zero. So we'll open as read only. I'm going to get all the lines. So lines equals fh read lines. Get all the lines in there. And then I'm going to close my file handle. At this point, it's time to figure out where the virus begins and ends. I know it starts with this comment here and ends with another comment down here. So I'm going to keep track of whether or not I'm in the virus or not. So in virus equals false. And I'm going to read through the lines one at a time. For a line in lines, uh, I need to do a check to see if that line is the beginning of the virus or not. So if it is the beginning of the virus, that'd be research, search for that line. And I'm gonna find a line that starts with, I do a start with a carrot, and it's gonna have to look like my virus begin line. And then I know I'm in the virus. All right, so that's what I check, and if it matches, then I wanted to mark myself as being in the virus. Okay, now the next thing is, if I'm in the virus, 
which I will just barely be coming the virus if that was that line. And if it's not that line, then if I'm already in the virus, then I'll be in the virus still. So if I'm in the virus, then I want to save a copy of the line. So my D code and the line. So now this D code variable up here is going to start getting lines added to it. Oops. Change that yep. All right, now, if I'm not in the virus, or if I'm at the end of the virus, I want to leave the virus. And I want to get this last line. So uh, I, will, I would append that right here. And then if I am no longer in the virus because I've hit the last line, I want to break out. So three, search. And I'm going to look for a line that starts with the same thing as that last line of my virus virus end. So if it ends with that, then I know that I am done with my virus and I can break out and just be done. Okay. The next step is to find potential victims. So there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm just going to do a little glob statement. You know, I have programs in glob, glob, and I will find everything that has a star.py extension. Pretty simple way to do it. Uh, if you want to spread further, you would have to do something a little bit more aggressive in finding. All right, now I want to look through each of my potential victims and figure out if I need to infect them. So for my program prog in progs, uh, what do I need to do? I need to first, um, read in all the files. So I'm going to mark the, well, I'm reading the files first. So my file handle is open my program as read only. I want to get all my lines. I'll call it my P code. P code equals fh.read lines. That gets all of that. And then I'm going to close the file handle. So now the file is closed and I'm going to check to see if I'm infected. All right. Cause I might be opening myself. I could be opening some other program that's infected. So I will set infected equals false. So that's the assumption. It's not infected unless I find a line that indicates I'm infected. So then I go through the lines for line in P code. Uh, if um, if I find that, that thing, if there's a virus begin in my code, well, if it's in the line, then I know that I'm inside of a virus, right? So I can just mark it as infected and break out. Um, True, and I will break. Now this will break out of my for loop reading the lines right here, but it won't break out of my other loop. So I'll still be looking at programs. All right. So if I am still not infected, so if, if infected, is in, infected is false, then I want to infect the system. So it's going to have some new code which is going to be a collection of my original program code plus my virus code. And so that will be first an empty list. And then I do an if statement if, um, if it's that first line. So some things start with this hash, um, whatever thing in it. If it's there, then we want to just take that line because that makes it so we can spread in other environments better. So if it's in P code, and I will get that and my new code equals my, I'll actually just append it, append, and I'm going to pop it off the front of the list so it's not there, p code pop first one, and then we're done with that. Now I want to load all the virus code in because I want the virus to run 
early in the code. You don't know if there's going to be an exit somewhere in the middle, so I'll get that. So new code is going to extend. Extended, just add all the V code into it. There you go. And now I'm going to add my rest of my code. All of my P code, original program code. And now I have a new copy of the virus written here. Now the next step is to write the file out. And I only need to write it if I'm going to infect it. So I can just write it right here. But I'm going to mark that I'm writing it. Writing the new virus infected code. All right. So what I do is I open up the file again. And open it this time. Instead of writing it, opening it for reading, I'm going to open it for writing. And it's once again in prog. And I'm going to write it. And then I want to write all the lines. And all the lines are in this new code thing. And then I can close the file. All right. At this point, I can do my optional payload, and it's already there. So now this looks good, and it's time to troubleshoot and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. All right. So now from the command prompt here, if I type in hello.py, it should do nothing because it's not infected. If I type in virus.py, it says infected because that was a payload. Now if I run hello.py again, it says infected. So if you look back at my code, oh, it says that hello.py has been modified by another program. I'll reload it, yes. And now I can see that my hello.py has been infected. And this is how a virus works.